All right, so in the last class, we submitted our spot illustrations. And even if we're not fully committed to them, like we still maybe want to make some corrections or we think they can be improved, we can move on to designing type to go with them. So this is assignment six, and this is going to be about designing text and actually creating our own type to go with our spot illustration and then putting it all together with a background uh, into a poster. So we've talked about kind of layout. Today we're going to talk about not just text blocking, like where you put the things, but we're going to talk about typesetting, which is actually choosing the design of the type and things like the spacing between the, the letters that would be kerning or between the lines of type that would be letting, playing with serifs, playing with things like the bellies and the, the widths and the feet, uh, you know, on different typefaces or different letter forms. We can do them by hand. We can modify from existing typefaces. And we're going to do it all in the most kind of direct way we can, right? That you can replicate on any machine, even at the library where you don't have administrative privileges. So one simple way of text blocking is to take your spot illustration and to just run a banner over it. Right? That's something that's very common in tattoo design because often a tattoo artist will offer a bunch of different kind of spot illustrations as a flash art, like a heart, a snake, uh, a panther, you know. And then people will want to customize it. They want to put their mom's name on it. They want to put their their sister's name on it. I don't know. Whatever. So instead of trying to figure out how to put it around the image, they might just run a banner on top. So sometimes text blocking has to do with creating an illustrative space for the text as well. So if we look at my demo for assignment five, it was, let's see, this fox design, right? Which is a maze, and it's going to go with the term suffer no fools. And remember, once you've designed that, we designed it with an offset, with a border, so that it can show up on different surfaces, like a good spot illustration, and still be visible, right? So you see that white offset around it that helps it be visible on products in all their different variations. Now, I haven't set up all the settings for this, which is why I will turn a lot of these off. I just have it only viewable to me right now. And once you, if you want to do this within Redbubble, what you say is you say manage your portfolio and then you can edit the settings. So I can add tags, I can give a description. All of that's good if you actually want to sell something and want it viewable. And then for like the basic t-shirt, placement matters. Right? No matter how good your design is, if it's not placed well within the intended product, it's not going to work well. That's the same thing with type. Placement is the first thing that matters. Beyond the style of the type, where are you going to place it? And to, do, to understand placement, you need to know what the format is. So, even before you pick you know, what your background color might be, these are the things that matter. So, we are going to do that with our text blocking sketches. And each of those deliberate things is not really a creative solution, though it is based on your visual taste. It's more of a design solution. It's solving a problem. So, we're doing design today. Poster design, type design. And design is based not on self-expression and experimentation like art is which is what we definitely did with our spot illustration, design is based on problem solving. So what is the problem? The first problem is we want to add type to our designs. But we don't want the type to compete with our designs and make it so we don't look at the image, the spot illustration, as much. So this is just a simple one which does handmade type. I made the NLC here with a lowercase n and then an L and a C as kind of frayed banners just sitting on top of this elaborate Day of the Dead illustration, right? That's an example of where the type you want might be fully drawn by hand by you. Let's see, this 
one is an example of using type around a spot illustration that's just modified from an existing typeface. It's clean, you don't look at it too much, and yet it can convey a lot of, a lot of letters without taking away. So we're, we're figuring out type that's supportive, not distracting and not artwork in its own right. You know, you don't want people staring at the type because there's spirals and stars in it when you want them also looking at your illustration. You want them to be able to see it as a whole thing. So that's some of the, the design problems we're dealing with. Now, a banner is one way to deal with that, but it does cover up some of your artwork, some of your illustration. So my design of that fox is very much a triangle. And I, we have this three-word phrase, suffer no fools. We can put it all on one line of type, like you see here. We could split it in two, like above and below. We could split it in three. All of these are good options. So these are my quick thumbnail sketches. And this is called text blocking because you're figuring out the space. I'll show it to you digitally really quickly because sometimes that can be a good way. So I'm going to go ahead and open up my assignment five just in preview, my illustration. And then I'm going to go to Photopea. And because knowing the end format matters, I'm going to create a new project. And close this. I'm going to say File New. And I'm going to call this project my semester code, my name, assignment six, poster layout. So in design, when you're solving problems of space and placement, those are called layout problems. And then I need to change the image size because what is our actual format? What's the physical format of our posters? It's in inches. It's the largest we can print in this class, and that is 16 inches wide by 20 inches tall. And I'm actually going to keep a 72 pixels per inch, just a screen resolution, just for my sketches. Why isn't it changing it? <laughs> Image size, 16 by 20. Okay. Hmm. Let's try it under canvas size. Inches 16 by 20. There we go. Okay. I'm not sure why I was getting that glitch there, but I'm going to fill it with white. So we have a 16. Let me show you the image size again. This is a new file within photo p it's 16 by 20 inches just at screen resolution 72 because this is just our sketch for our layout we'll later change this to full resolution okay what i can do is take my png my cutout image raster image from assignment 5 drag and drop that in and then i can use option to place it directly from the center and either grow it or shrink it to what I think is a decent size for the finished poster. And then I can decide, just like I did with the t-shirt, you know, placing my product here, I have to decide on that format how high should it be, how low should it be. So these are problems of spacing. These are layout problems. And these are just suggestions for us. So maybe I'd put it about there. Okay, now that I know that that placement works, and some people find it distracting to do, use their full color illustration. So if you like, you can just use your line art. I have my EPS line art right here. I can use option again and then use my arrow key and raise it up a little bit. And maybe I do my text blocking sketch with that. And some people just don't want to have to look at their spot illustration at all. And in that case, you can just scribble in something. 
that works. Like I did by hand with my text blocking sketch. I just made my fox and simplified it as a triangle. Right? So we know what our text is. Our text is suffer no fools. So now on a new layer, I'm going to use my brush tool in PhotoP. I'm going to use the default colors. I turn on uh, pressure sensitivity. I'm going to have smoothing at zero, so it just doesn't slow me down at all. And I'm going to remind myself what the type is. Suffer no fools. So I recommend, it's not required, but incredibly helpful, to do a bunch of quick thumbnails, thinking for each thumbnail, you know, what is the format of the poster around it, right? And then once you've done that, you then might think, what's the best solution? What's the one that I actually want to, to pursue? And then, you can start doing a more refined text blocking sketch. So if my favorite approach is this one, let's see, I think it's actually this one, the suffer no fools. I can try that here. And this is how text blocking works. You don't write the letters, you block out the shapes. So I want the suffer type to take up this space. I want the no type to take up this space. And I want the fools to take up this space. So that the overall shape is like that, for instance. And then I can divide it further. So suffer is six letters. So one, two, three, four, five, six. And then I'm just kind of carving out the box. So it'd be suffer. And that's a little bit of a problem with the R, right? And then no would fit in here, kind of nested between the E and the R. And then fools would have a really big F, then an O, then another O, some nice symmetry there, and then an L, and then an S. So you can kind of see some of the problems this might cause, right, with text blocking. All right, so once you've done a text blocking sketch, you've kind of played with your layout, it sets up the problems you need to solve. And there are various ways they can be solved. They can be solved with, with the type that you choose and that you modify. You can draw your own type. I like to have a few different solutions. So this is with kind of blockier text. But what if I just went really freeform with it? And instead say, you know, I want it to fill this space. So instead of being blocks, they're more like blobs. I want it to fill this space, or maybe, maybe it looks like this. Then I want it to fill this kind of space. I think that would be fun. And then I can think, okay, well, how might that look? And then I can say, okay, well, let's see, suffer. So I want the S to maybe take up all this space. Then the U and the F. And we're doing this at a screen resolution, not a full resolution, so you don't feel like anything is permanent yet, because you're really just getting a sense of the layout. And notice how I have those two F's and I don't make them the same. Then my E is kind of very close cropped. Maybe I want to make that a little bit more open. And this is kind of the solution for people who really have always doodled letter, letters and like letters. And maybe play with more decorative things. And then my no, maybe I even get a little bit strong with that. And I give it these little serifs and feet. And then for my F, F is tricky because it's got that strong horizontal to start. I don't have a lot of...